Welcome to the Mill Creek Government Channel. I'm Judy Zelina. Did you know aggressive driving is among the leading causes of highway crashes and fatalities in Pennsylvania? And were you aware that wearing your seatbelt is your best defense against injury or death in the event of a crash? However, most motorists don't realize they are aggressive drivers. And we also don't realize there is no reason to be driving without a seatbelt. Here today to talk about these important safety issues is Corporal Anthony Shamirin. He's with the Mill Creek Police Department Traffic Division. Thank you, Welcome, Thank Corporal. You. And we also have Jill Harry. Jill is a first time guest, yes. and she is with PennDOT, and she's the District 1 Safety Press Officer. Welcome, you two. Thank you very much. We're going to be talking about some very, very important subjects. Thanks for having us, Judy. Yes, thanks for having me. Um, first thing I want to talk about maybe is the aggressive driving end of it. Um, first off, what is aggressive driving? When I think of aggressive driving, it's somebody on you and honking your horn and threatening you. Is that what you consider aggressive driving? Well, uh, that's certainly one that's of them. That's one of them, uh, but that's yeah. it. That's I mean, all I, I think th of it. I think is. we've all but, come but, across someone like that before, but there's however. But variables, right? Yeah, there are certain categories of that uh, makes you an aggressive driver. Things like speeding, tailgating, uh, unsafe lane changes, uh, red light running, things of that nature. Those, those are all aggressive driving behaviors. It is frustrating. Now, um, the, when you see someone who ha is displaying this type of behavior. Now, how do you know if you are an aggressive driver? I would say the best way to figure out if you're an aggressive driver is just, just ask yourself a few questions. Do I speed excessively? Do I have the habit of tailgating? Do I speed to try to beat a red light or do I simply go through stop signs? And also, am I passing illegally or carelessly? And if you do those things, especially on a regular basis, then you should consider yourself an aggressive driver. And I think every one of us are probably sitting here watching this saying, I'm not an aggressive driver. But I'm here to tell you, I think we've all been in a situation where you get a little heated, you're in a hurry, uh, somebody's going slow, slower than you think they should be going, <laughs> let's just put it that way. And maybe we do show some of this behavior. And I think. Jill, that's a very good idea to just to ask yourself a mm -hmm. couple questions like that. So now, all right, you're tailgating or maybe you're trying to pass. How does this behavior play into causing accidents? Well, especially from the uh, <clears throat> speeding standpoint, I mean, it, probably a large majority of the aggressive driver type violations are that of speeding and when you are speeding it contributes to crashes because of the fact of simply that you're not able to stop in time and we see a lot of rear end type crashes or uh, you know vehicles veering off the road because something will come out in front and they don't have enough time to mm -hmm. react to it basically so the, that's probably the biggest thing I mean other things are um, you know, when you're tailgating somebody, you're not leaving enough distance between you and the car in front of you, and you're not able to stop if, if that person abruptly stops. So, What is the distance we should be behind a vehicle? The rule of thumb basically is um, one car length for every 10 miles an hour that you're going. Okay. So, for, for instance, on a 40 mile per hour road, you should be at least four car lengths behind the car in front of you. And in the winter time here in Erie, you need to double that. Whatever the distance is, you need to be two car lengths okay, for every 10 miles an hour. That's, that's, that's a good rule of thumb. There is something that I just thought I would bring up to you guys that we're talking about aggressive driving. And I'll tell you what I think is, is a great place to start aggravating this behavior. And I think you see a lot of crashes and stuff in this merging lanes at, in our intersections. Some of our merging lanes are very, very small. There's, there's not... Uh, a lot of length to be able to merge. And you know, I'm, the one, one main one I'm talking about is right in front of Kmart on 26th Street. Mm -hmm. So how do you, if you're in the lane where you have to merge, you tell me what should you do in this behavior if people aren't letting you in to merge? 
Do you have an answer on that one, Corporal? I, I think just simply, you need to be patient. I think that that's the, the biggest thing is that people, they get impatient. They, they, they know that they need to eventually merge and you know they're not really seeing an opportunity, so they'll take risks. And because they don't want to wait, you know, and it's, it's we're, we're, we're probably talking about, you know, an extra 10 seconds here that if you could sit there and wait, traffic will eventually clear and then you can do so safely. But I mean, so many aggressive drivers out there, they don't want to, they don't want to wait. They, they see, you know, they know that they need to merge and they don't want right. to uh, sit and wait for traffic to clear. So they'll take risks and they'll, they'll stick themselves out there hoping that the other driver is going to right. stop for them and that's that's unfortunately that's when crashes start to happen and i think everybody feels that that they're in a hurry that their time is the most important so i i'm not going to let this person in because i'm in a hurry but if you would just ease up and let them in it would just move so much smoother mm -hmm. but i do i mean i do see a lot of aggressive behavior in those merging lanes and you should make sure you use your turn signal as well. Sometimes oh, yeah. people aren't using Definitely. their turn signals, then other people don't know what your intentions are or what you're even attempting to do. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. See, Jill has all these great <laughs> ideas. I am so glad you're here. I'm so glad you asked us to come. Well, I'll tell you, the corporal always has great ideas. He always has great tips for all of our viewers, so I'm glad to have you on board, too. Now, the statistics on uh, uh, aggressive driving. Do you have some statistics that you'd like to share? I do like have some share? numbers and I'm gonna have to read them because I wanna make sure that That's I get them correct. That's quite all right. So last year in Pennsylvania, there were 33,176 crashes in which speed was a contributing factor. And of those, 467 were fatal crashes. And so that was, both of those numbers were an increase from the year before. And more pointedly, here in Erie County, they also saw an increase in fatalities and crashes in which speed was a contributing factor. And those numbers went from four in 2014 to six in 2015. Wow. Wow. Jeez, oh man, that's really multiplying. Now, all right, now I have, I have a question uh, to ask you too. What if I observe or I happen to become a victim of, a, of an aggressive driver, what should I do? Well, I think the first thing is if you just observe somebody aggressive driving is that you don't try to challenge them. You don't try to you know, speed faster than they're going or get in their way. You just maybe back off a little bit, let them get past, try to stay relaxed, don't aggravate them by making gestures or responding to any types of gestures that they're making. Now, for enforcement, Mm -hmm. on this, of course, because tailgating, um, you know, it, it's illegal to tailgate, mm -hmm. speeding, and so forth. On aggressive driving, how, how would you, as an officer, be able to stop someone from this? Would somebody, like, call 911 and say someone is tailgating me, or is it just observance? You would just have to see them do this. No, that actually happens a lot. Does like, it really? call us. I mean, everybody has a cell phone nowadays. Yes. And uh, we get a lot of um, aggressive driver type calls. Mm -hmm. and, you know, some of them will, will come in as, you know, possible DUI drivers. Cause okay. Because like because of the way they're driving, they must be impaired. And, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes that is the case, and mm -hmm. other times they're just they're just driving ag aggressively. And um, people will call us, and they'll, and you know, and we encourage people if they're seeing people out there that are driving this way and, and creating you know dangerous situations to give us a call and try to, you know, if you give us a, a license plate number on the vehicle that and a, you know a general description of who's in it maybe, then even if we don't catch them in the act. We can go and follow up with that person later. If we have their plate information, we'll just go and send an officer to their house and find out what the problem was. And you know, if it's something that we can take some immediate action on, we will. And if it's something that we just need to, you know, counsel them about, then we'll do that as well. Well, I think that I think that's a great idea, you know, because I, I think a lot of people may have this, like I said, they may have this aggressive behavior and they don't realize okay what it's coming across to somebody else that's in the next car that may be a bit fearful right. mm -hmm. of what that person's going to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, because, well, face it, we've, we've heard and read a lot of stuff in the media, in the news, 
some not so happy endings. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, of road rage yeah. and right, aggressive. Right. Which is like an behavior. extreme version of aggressive driving. Right. <laughs> uh, but the, you know, in just about every road rage case, that's how it starts. It, it starts. It starts because of some sort of road rage type or some sort of aggressive driving type of behavior mm -hmm. on one person's part, and then it escalates. You know, and and I I think what Jill said was good is just that you know if you if you see someone do these one one of these things, back off, give them some room. You know, if if they continue to keep doing. Um, things in front of you, then right. get their information, pull over, call us, mm -hmm. you know, and we will go and deal with the person instead of, you know, taking matters into your own hands and having things escalate. I mean, things escalate quickly, and, and that's usually when we get calls for, uh, you know, road rage type right. incidents where people are getting out of their cars and, and you know, mm -hmm. and worse. So, well, I think we all have to stop and just sort of calm down when you're behind the wheel of a car mm -hmm. you know it's I, I remember teaching when my children were driving starting to drive <laughs> but and I remember telling them you don't realize this is almost like a lethal weapon yep. right here mm -hmm. you have you're holding on to this it can hurt you and it can really hurt mm -hmm. someone so I think if you you know we've got distractions we've talked about mm -hmm. distracted driving mm -hmm. now we've got aggressive Mm -hmm. Driving, you just everybody has to calm down. Right. Mm -hmm. You're going to get to where you want to be, right? And hopefully safely if it's, you're not aggressive driving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. And I think that um, PennDOT and the, the police take aggressive driving very se um, seriously. So we partner together to do aggressive driving enforcement waves, not because they want to get out there and give a bunch of tickets, but because they want people to understand the seriousness of aggressive driving. And we have one of those waves coming up here in mm -hmm. July. I Correct. think it starts on the 6th. July the 6th, mm -hmm. yes ma'am. Tell me about that. What is an aggressive driving wave? Um, they're just periods of time that, that uh, they, they break it up into. This particular wave happens to start on uh, at the beginning of July, July mm -hmm. the 6th. Okay. And it will run all the way through the end of August. So it's going to encompass most of the summer, which is probably the time that aggressive driving is at its highest anyway. So, so um, Corporal, what you'll do at that time is just pay much closer particular attention to some of the driving habits out there correct of people I mean, they, tailgating um, we have extra funding so that we can place officers on the road to concentrate on solely that okay not you know in addition to our patrol um, assignments we send officers out and their their sole purpose is to go out and target aggressive driving okay. behaviors mm -hmm. right so okay. we will go out and we will set up you know various details all over the township. All right. Sometimes we'll have three and four guys out at a time on, on in a particular location. And we'll just, you know, look for all those um, aggressive driving type behaviors. I think it's wonderful. I think it's a wonderful thing that you do because even, even stopping some of this behavior, like I said, I'm probably going to guess nine out of ten times they don't realize how they're coming across and don't realize their behavior. Yeah, I've stopped. I mean, I've stopped numerous people, and in, in, in you know, in just about every case, I explain to them the purpose for our stop, and that you know, we're out searching right. for aggressive drivers, and just you know, they all have pretty much the same reaction. Well, that's not me. Not me. I'm not an aggressive driver. <laughs> no, I, I have to sort of educate them and say, well, actually, you know, I know that you don't label yourself as being an aggressive driver, mm -hmm. but you're driving aggressively. Mm -hmm. you know, I try to make them understand. So. Well, I love the enforcement uh, procedures that you guys have in place now. Um, but another subject we wanted to talk about is, first off, aggressive driving isn't the only type of risky behavior motorists engage in. Uh, not wearing a seat, a seat belt yes. is uh, another factor in fatalities. Yes. It's actually a major factor in fatalities here in Erie County. You know, Joe, you and I were talking a little bit before the show, and I was said, People have all kinds of excuses of mm -hmm. why not. Of course, you haven't heard any of them, no. right, Corporal? <laughs> not a one. Never heard one, one excuse for a seatbelt. <laughs> they have all kinds of excuses. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to um, throw out some of these excuses. And I'm sure viewers, many of you have used these same excuses. Okay. But I would like you to really state the facts mm -hmm. on, okay. on these excuses. The first one. Uh, you hear, I'm sure, one of the ones is, I'm not driving very far. Okay. Okay. Well, Tell me about that one. 
the reality is most people are involved in crashes that are close to home. So just because you're only going down the block doesn't make you immune to being involved in a crash. But why, we do think we are. Mm -hmm. So yeah. every time you get in, buckle up. Okay, here's another one. And um, I know people that, that will use this one. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm in the back seat. Right. Well, when you're in the back seat and you're not wearing your seatbelt and you're involved in a crash, you actually become, I would say, a weapon to the others in the vehicle with you because now you could fly forward and you could hurt them. So now you're not only endangering yourself, you're endangering everybody else in the vehicle. I never thought that. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing that I have learned by talking to Corporal <laughs> Shamira is that if you're in the back seat and you've got the seatbelt on and it's rubbing your neck, and you want to put it behind you, that's also a no-no, isn't it? It is, and it's... it's and, t and tell me why, because I honestly didn't realize this till, till talking with you. Yeah, and I, I see it a lot, and it's typically drivers that are, you know, maybe a little shorter, and the reason being, <laughs> yeah, and the, what happens yeah, is yeah. typically uh, is they don't, they don't adjust the seatbelt correctly, and it's, there's, you know, most new cars these days, they have anchors on the side, and you can actually adjust that. Right. And for drivers that are a little shorter, they need to bring that thing all the way down. And what it does is it, it makes the seat belt, the, the shoulder part of it, come straight across the middle of your chest, which is really, that's where you want it. You want it here, not up here. Not here. Okay. Right, because if you get yourself into a crash and the seat belt is way up here, you know, you're going to hurt yourself. Okay. When it's across here like it should be, and number and one, it's not digging you. And number two, it's it's serving its purpose. Okay, and, it's going to restrain. And unfortunately, I do. I see a lot of people, and they'll take the shoulder part and they'll stick it around behind themselves and they're not doing themselves any favors. Mm -hmm. It's number one, it's it's uh, it's really not legal to wear it that way. It says in the you know the vehicle code says that not only do you have to wear it but you have to wear it the right way. Mm -hmm. And number two, it's defeating the purpose. I mean if you get yourself into a crash and that shoulder part is behind you, you know, your whole torso is just gonna get launched forward and and you know it's it's gonna make things worse for you. So so I think these shows are so important because th because these these little fallacies that we think are so true, mm -hmm. you know, you can, we can actually let people know the, the the truth of it. Here's one, and I and I we talked about this one. Uh, I'm pregnant. Well, I'm not, but I know. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody would say. But I'm pregnant, and the seatbelt yeah. is too tight. Yeah, or me. people will just say it's uncomfortable, so I'm not going to wear it. But I mean, what's I, the truth on that? They I still mean, need a seatbelt. Yes, you need to wear it, and you need to wear it properly because it's more uncomfortable to be injured in a crash, and it's there to protect you. So there's there's ways, like he had mentioned, to adjust the seatbelt to make it so mm -hmm. that it fits you properly and fits you more comfortably. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the reality of it is, if if you're not, you know, even for pregnant people or or whatever the reality is if you if you don't wear your seatbelt you're more likely to do harm to you and your child mm -hmm. by not having the seatbelt on so it's than very you are important by having it on mm -hmm. right always put that seatbelt on i don't care who you are where you're going put that seatbelt on before that car even starts mm -hmm. yes so i think that that's the main thing um You've got some statistics on yes. this for me, I mean, don't you? I think these really hit home the importance so, of wearing seatbelts because last year in Erie County, there were 21 um, fatalities from crashes. And of those 21, 15 of those people were not wearing a seatbelt. So that's 71% of the people who um, died in a crash in Erie County last year were not wearing a seatbelt, 71%. That's higher than the state average, which is 51%. So, I mean, it's, yeah, and you think about that, you wonder how many, if any of them, could have been saved if they had just properly buckled mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. That is eye-opening. But who is not buckling up? Is there a specific target group that is not buckling up? Yeah, I, it's, for, for the most part, it's um, people between the ages of 16 and 24. Mm -hmm. That's probably the biggest group. People that drive pickup trucks for some mm -hmm. reason. We're finding out that that a large percentage of people that drive pickup trucks don't wear it. Um, and then people that tend to drive, that are in their car alone, you know, because I, I think a lot of times maybe parents, when their kids are in the car, they're encouraging their kids to put them on. And I think that uh, I've seen a lot of times where their kids are encouraging mm -hmm. the parents to put them on, you mm -hmm. know. So, and I think that, you know, maybe when the parents get in and they're, they're by themselves, there's nobody watching them, they, Maybe they're just taking a short trip. They figure, ah, I'm not going to wear it. Mm -hmm. You know, so those are 
a lot of the people that I see when I'm out there um, doing these seatbelt enforcements are people that fall into those categories. Okay. Now, now, Corporal, you you do if if I'm not wearing a seatbelt, you can pull me over for that. You can see that I don't have my seatbelt on. A a, a seatbelt violation for an adult, a driver, okay. is a secondary violation, which basically means that. We as the officers cannot stop you just for that. Now, if you are under the age of 18 and you are in the car and you're not belted and we see it, that is a primary violation. All right. So if your kids are in the car and mm -hmm. they're bouncing around in the back seat or, you know, or we not can wearing the right or, or, or right, or they're, child not, seat. they're not in their child seat properly or, you know, if it's something that we can see, then yeah, we can stop you for that. But okay. if it's you know, if it's single driver, they're an adult, they're not wearing it. Then no, we have to stop them for something else first, mm -hmm. and then we'll address the seatbelt with them. So, sadly, that's a shame because well, yeah. yeah, it is because it's so important. Yeah. I right. think it is. It's very, very, very important. Um, you were, we were just talking. Uh, we mentioned child. Yeah, child. Yes, safety seats. Safety seats. Mm -hmm. Something is new on the horizon with that, isn't there? Yes. Um, just recently, Governor Wolf signed into legislation some new guidelines for um, children and car safety seats for those who are two and under. So now um, kids two and under will be required to be in a rear-facing seat in the back of the car. And this will start in mid-August is when that regulation will go into effect. Okay. Because it used to be just till a year. I and, believe and then it was they a could. Year. Mm -hmm. Okay. And mm -hmm. he, the the new law clarifies all the rules. Mm -hmm. But I always tell people, if you're wondering, am I using the right seat? Am I using the seat properly? How long can my child use the seat? The best thing to do is to contact your local police. Usually, mm -hmm. they either will have somebody certified on their staff, or they will know how to get you in touch with somebody who is certified to look at your seat, mm -hmm. to evaluate how it's been installed in your vehicle, and to evaluate how you're buckling your child into that seat. And and then they can tell you if you're doing it right or if you're doing it wrong. And then if you are, how to do it properly so that everybody can be safe when they're out there on the roads. I think that's very, mm -hmm. very important information mm -hmm. because all kidding aside, these car seats, holy they cow. They can seem very complicated the oh first time you put them in, goodness. definitely, yes. Goodness, I go to baby showers and they're like as big as my house, these things. Mm -hmm. And really, it's... It, it's so important to have them installed properly. So yes. I think it's wonderful yes, that we they, can go someplace mm -hmm. and have someone say, yeah, you are doing it correctly. Yeah, and they'll do um, seat checks from time to time in different places I've here in the I've seen that, right. So you can just pull in and mm -hmm. they'll look at your seat right there on the spot. But then, like I said, several of the local police departments also have certified technicians that if you call ahead of time and mm -hmm. ask when they're there, make an appointment, they will sit down with you and mm -hmm. go over all of that as well. So that, you know, because we all want people to be safe. They don't want to give people tickets. We don't want people to get mm -hmm. tickets. We want people to be safe. That's correct. And that's why mm -hmm. we're here. That's why we have mm -hmm. programs like this about aggressive driving and seatbelt safety because you do want people to be, be safe. That's your job. That's yes. what you do. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. So, um, uh, is there anything that we haven't touched base on that you would like our viewers to know? Um, I guess if we're still talking about seatbelts, I could throw out a couple more statistics that people might like. I think to that hear. would be important. Okay. First of all, it takes less than three seconds to put on a seatbelt. So even when you're in a hurry, who doesn't have three seconds to put on a seatbelt? So those excuses like, I'm only going down the road a little way, or I'm riding at night, no one's even going to know, like, come on, it's three seconds, and it could make a huge difference if you were involved in an incident. Um, also, seatbelt use in Pennsylvania is about 84%. So 84% of the people are wearing their seatbelt. We would love that to be 100%, because right. if it were, then hopefully those fatalities, statistics would go down with it as well. So, mm -hmm. And lastly, um, the National Highway Safe, wait, the National <laughs> NHTSA. <laughs> Well, I you guys say, love the acronyms you, are sometimes yes, you love get acronyms. your tongue all twisted up, but <laughs> they um, <laughs> they predict that for every percentage, so that eighty four percent, for every percent that would go up, um, eight to twelve lives would be saved throughout, you know, and statewide in crashes. So, really? So if we, every time we can tick that up a little more, a little more, a little more, then you know those other numbers are going to go down, and that would be great. Well, I think I think this is uh, great program. I think um, the enforcement 
on these two subjects is, is fantastic. Thank you for all you do, Corporal and Jill. Welcome aboard. I, you do a great job, you know, getting this information out to our viewers. Mm -hmm. So thank you again for joining me. And uh, viewers, you. if you have um, any more questions, Jill, where could they go to get more information on, you know, the subjects that we were talking about? Um, on aggressive driving and seatbelt safety, you can go to PennDOT's website. So okay. that is www.pendot.gov. Then there is a section called Travel and PA. And you, if you hit on that tab, it'll take you to some safety information from there. By the way, their website is great. I mean, oh, really, <laughs> there's so much. It, yes. it covers everything. You know, if there's mm -hmm. construction, also on different yes. roads and mm -hmm. stuff. Yep. So it really is a great Detours website. Just go on, take yep. a look, and you're going to learn something. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but anyhow, again, Corporal, thank you so much for joining us, Jill. Thank you, Judy. It was a pleasure. And viewers, again, go to their website. You'll learn something new. Thank you for tuning in to the Milker Government Channel. Until next time, have a wonderful day. You're watching the Mill Creek Government Channel, powered by WQLN Public Media.